Okay, I've got this set up in a vise here and I wanted to go over the setup procedures for it, putting it back together. So this is the back side of the bell housing. So again, this is an Alpha 1. Here's another one. This is the early version, Gen 1. Okay, so I've got the bellows installed and I put the hose clamp here. I've tightened that to 40 inch pounds. The old style like this actually has a groove. And what you want to do is make sure that your bellows is installed top and forward. So usually the clip right here in that place. Okay. There we go. So the next thing I did was I put the exhaust bellows on and the same thing I put the hose clamp on, I've slipped it into place, and then I've torqued that hose clamp to 40 inch pounds. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my water pickup hose here, and this is kind of difficult to do, so I don't know how well the video will show it, but I'm gonna make sure that when I install this, I've got the bend if the hose has any bend to it like this. And I put a little bit of soap on the hose, and I'm gonna try to work it on there so that when I get it in position, I can slip it onto the the housing. Now it's going to be a little bit tight and in the way you might not be able to see perfectly, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, I got the hose in place and it's in the right position and when it comes out like this, there's no kinks to it where it's gonna go onto the bell housing. Now I've got to snake the hose clamp up there and I usually have the hose clamp up on the top facing down a little bit so I can get it. And this isn't the easiest thing either and sometimes a pair of needle nose pliers will help you get this hose clamp up into position once it's installed because it's pretty tight in that housing. Okay, one more check to make sure that a hose isn't going to have any kinks when it's pushed back in here because when you push the bell housing in, it's going to slide back in there. So I like to just kind of wheel it around before I tighten the hose clamp up. There it is, okay. So that one's in position. All right, so now we're ready to put the, ready to put the housing on. And we're gonna put this hose on first and slip that on there. And you can get upside down once you tilt this up. You can tilt the bell housing up so you can tighten that hose clamp from underneath. You're going to push the whole assembly on, which is going to push the bellows, and you're going to reach inside of it and work it on there. So I'm going to go put a little bit of uh, adhesive on this housing. I've already cleaned this off, and then I'll slide that housing into place. Okay, I've slipped the hose on here onto the fitting, and I'm going to work the hose clamp down into position next. Sometimes easier said than done. There we go. Right. And I'm going to leave that loose because I want to be able to rotate this housing on that hose until I'm ready to tighten it up. So now what I can do is I can slide this in position and push that hose on there. So now I'm ready to do my final. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hose clamp on here on my bellows. All right. And then I'm going to reach in here 
and I'm going to push that on and work the hose, work the bellows around from the inside with my hand until I feel it pop on there and then I'll push it on there and again I want that hose clamp over here on the right facing down maybe oh one o'clock actually something like that so I can actually get in here with my socket driver so always take a look at that before you want to put it together you know, take your socket driver and your hose and make sure you can get up here to where that hose clamp is okay so I can see that that's about where I want that hose clamp at that angle So let me get that, I'll get the bellows uh, adhesive on there and we'll be ready to go. Okay, hose clamps in position. This is on. Let's see if we can slide this down into position. Make sure the clip doesn't pop off. If it does, put it back on there and crush it back on. You gotta have the clip on there. And I've had these pop off a couple of times. Not much fun, but you have to have the clip on there. Otherwise, it won't bond to the transom assembly. Don't get any ideas to use a screwdriver right about now. You'll poke a hole in it for sure. I've seen a lot of people do that too. Okay. Just got to finish tightening this hose clamp. Pull this back and take a look with the flashlight. Yep. It's all the way in the groove. That looks good. Okay, yeah, we have a winner. All right, I'm getting ready to put the hinge pins in here and the first thing I've got to do is get the special tool which is this spline socket tool um, you can buy them aftermarket but the part number for Mercury Marine is 91-78310 and that fits the hinge pin just perfectly so next I want to apply a little bit of Loctite blue Loctite 242 to the threads of the hinge pins so the new Loctite bottles are pretty nice. Um, they have an end you cut off, but then they have a little valve in them, which makes it easy to prevent it from spilling all over the place with a lid. We'll put a little blue Loctite on here. There we go. That one started. Okay, I'll put the other one in. 
and we'll get ready to torque it. Okay, I'll go over the other side, just check the other side again and snug it up, and then I'll torque this. Okay, I'm getting ready to torque these hinge pins in, and I just wanted to um, show you my torque wrench. I bought this a couple of years back. It's the new electronic one. And a lot of the things that you assemble today uh, require angle torque, and this does the same thing. So as you can see, the display I can run through, and I can go through the units, inch pounds, newton meters, kilograms, centimeters, um, and then I get to foot pounds. So the torque spec for this is 95. So I'm gonna roll on up here to 95, just like that, and then I'll torque it. So I'll let you see what happens with a torque wrench, which is pretty impressive. There it is. It even tells me where I was at. I went a little over 96.6 foot-pounds. Okay, here we go. So the last thing I need to do is to put the exhaust bellows on. What are hoses installed? So the last thing I need to do is I need to put the exhaust bellows on. I'll show you that. And then the covers for your trim sensor and your trim limit. Okay, so we're winding down here. We're getting down to the last part of this, which is the exhaust bellows. So the grounding clip is installed. I've got my hose clamp in here. And what I've got to do is reach in here and pull that bellows out. So we're going to use a special tool for that. <clears throat> these are the exhaust bellow expanders and they're just for the actual um, the exhaust bellows itself so I'm gonna slide this through here and again you have to take that shift shaft assembly out to do this so this would be the last thing you do before you put your shift cable in so I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna spread out the the tool it usually has a clip to lock it together and then I can pull the bellows into position and then reach underneath. Um, and then what I will do is I'll reach underneath here with a socket driver and I'll tighten up that hose clamp. So let's get this going here. I'm going to have to tilt it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinstall this tool. Slip it back there behind the first rib. I'm going to spread it again just a little bit my hose clamp on here and I can slide my hose clamp way in just to have a little bit of tension on it so I can hold it on there when I tilt it up. And then just tighten the hose clamp. This tool is the only way to get that bellows on. You gotta have that tool. Okay, so we've gotten this all set to go. All right, so we have this back together and I wanted to go over the exhaust bellows a little bit with you. Um, I like to put the exhaust bellows on small boats, small horsepower boats, um, four cylinders and V6 engines, especially uh, the smaller ones because it will help keep the exhaust um, noise level down. Um, there won't be as much reverberation. If you get into the larger horsepower engines, 5.0s, 5.7s, any of the V8s, then you definitely want to use what's known as an exhaust tube. What it will do is it will open up the exhaust a little bit more when the drive is tilted up. It allows some of the exhaust to exit around. It's not a true bellows. It's called a tube. It will fit over the receptacle of this loosely. There's no hose clamp for the backside. 
So when you trim the drive up, it will be a little bit noisier, but it will give you less back pressure and a little more performance. Um, my Chris Craft, I have that and that boat as well, but these are, um, I'm putting, replacing these transom assemblies from the early R drive to a MR transom assembly um, so that I can use the bigger pistons. It's just a better system, plus I can use the new trim pump system, um, which is not a uh, one transom assembly mount. I can mount it elsewhere. So I'm going to do that video as well. I'm going to show you guys the upfit for this. This is going to replace the R drives. I'm going to pull the engines out and we'll go through that. But here is the information for those exhaust bellows. So if you're interested and you wanted to keep it quiet, um, the uh, original part number that I had from an older unit, this 18654A1, this fits both early model Alpha 1 Gen 1's R drives, MR drives, and Gen true, Gen 2's. So the new part number is 8M124227. If you want to make life easy and you don't want to buy the special tool, you can do yourself a favor. Skip buying the tool. You absolutely have to have it to put the exhaust in. There's no way you're getting an oil mirror without it. So just buy the tube if you want to do that. It'll be a little, a little louder, but don't worry about it. It only attaches on the inside of the transom assembly. You don't have to attach it out here, so there's nothing to attach. So that part number... Is seven eight four five eight A one.